Hi, my name is David Reichel. I'm the founder and creator of Color Switch and Color Switch LLC, and I design games. David, we're here at GDC. Talk a little bit about the history of your company and how it started up to your success of Color Switch. Okay. So I started in my apartment. I was making games for two years. I made 40 games, put them on the, I think it was a Barnes & Noble App Store, which doesn't exist anymore. So all those games went off the App Store, down with the Titanic. And after about two years of making it 40 games, it didn't have any success. I thought of Color Switch back in June of 2015. And we launched it in December that year, and it became a pretty big hit pretty quick in a lot of countries. And then here in the US, it went number one in, I think, January, February. And then created a little in-studio team for my company and of uh, a couple programmers and artists and business, uh, business development. And since then, we're, um, what was it? We're doing the things you talk about history. So you released Color Switch, oh, and yeah. then you had your company, and yeah. now you're making the remaster, the yes. relaunch? Yes. So, uh, so currently, we're working on the relaunch of the game. And uh, that is basically the core game is the same. We're polishing it up a little bit, adding a little uh, extra bells and whistles to it. But we have a lot of uh, side games or mini games that we're coming out with that use the Color Switch theme in different ways. And we'll be coming out with a lot of feature requests that players have been wanting, a lot of social, multiplayer kind of requests, content creation. I think there's a game called Geometry Dash who, where you get to create your own levels. And so I wanted to do that for Color Switch for a while, but have it be as simple as editing photos on Instagram. You know, I didn't want something to be complex and so that most people could create the, the, the content. So people could create their own levels, upload them, download them. That probably won't be at launch, but that's one of the features that people have been wanting that we'll do later on. Talk about some of the challenges of being on a mobile device in such an oversaturated market. What makes a game stick out? Well, there is a my favorite book called Thinker Toys, and it's a book of creative thinking techniques, and these techniques help you generate the most creative solution for any problem you encounter in business or otherwise. And in the book, he talks about how there's holes in everything. There's literally nothing solid in the universe. If you took a microscope to a wall or a rock or anything, you'd see holes everywhere. So just like there's holes in physical objects, there's holes in conceptual objects. And in the market of games, it may seem like it's oversaturated, but there are many holes where you could, if you find them, you can fill that hole and fill the need for the market. So when I came out with my game, uh, a couple years ago, there were already people saying that the market was oversaturated, the gold rush is over, but I always had it in my mind that game design was paramount, and if you could, or if I could, design a game that was, or if I could internalize these game design concepts and design something that was well designed, I'm trying to think of a clever way to say that, but yeah, something that is designed with techniques that I've kind of honed over a couple years, that I could have success in games. And so Color Switch is basically just a culmination of two to three years of studying and applying game design concepts and principles and finally kind of having all that come together for this and it just blew up from there. So um, I would just say that uh, it's a result of, of that, of just trying to, always attempting to improve my game design skills to the point to where I could create something that could really connect with people. No matter how saturated the market is, it doesn't matter if it's films or anything, if you can fill that, if you can find that hole and fill it, you're you're gonna be fine. You're relaunching your game as a kind of a special edition with all multiple mini games being added. Talk a little about that creative process as well as the challenges of listening to a community and giving them what they want, but at the same time making your game your game. Right. Well, I, I think it's important to think of this in the correct way. And by this, I mean this business. I don't come at this business from an artist's perspective, even though game internalizing and applying game design principles is a very artistic thing. But you have to make sure you're doing it for as, as a, as a uh, making games as a business that are strong for your business. So when I designed Color Switch, I wasn't thinking of a fun game that, I would, that, would, that would satisfy my needs as an artist. I thought, okay, what is a game that would be the best game to make for this business so that it could be something that most people would want to play? Um, so I focused on that. And I think when I'm coming at designing new concepts and thinking uh, you know, also from the audience perspective, that it still comes around um, uh, 
those terms because if most people are going to enjoy a product, there has to have certain qualities that make sense for that business. And so we, may, we might have a few players who want this new feature, but most players don't want it. And so I kind of just go with what most players want. And usually what most players want pretty much falls in line with how I would design the game. And overall, the, I just keep the game simple. Um, I don't add any complexity like, you know, you can usually do everything with one finger. So it, I'm never gonna do a update for the game where you, it's like a Call of Duty where you have like 30 buttons and you're trying to like get get the hang of it over five or six months like I first had to do with Halo. First time I ever played it, it took me like six months to get the hang of it and finally I was uh, beating my buddy at it. Um, but uh, yeah, I kind of just try to keep things very simple because the design is very simple, the mechanics are very simple, and then basically we just keep the core fundamentals of the design the same and add on to that. As a game designer, and not only a game designer, but a successful game designer, how do you feel when new elements come in to the ecosystem of gaming? Uh, for example, last few years have been VR, and this year it's just been a Nintendo Switch whirlwind. I love the Switch. <laughs> uh, you know, I grew up on Nintendo ever since I was nine. We had our uh, first Nintendo, the Nintendo Entertainment System, and ever since then I've been a Nintendo fan mainly. But um, I look at it like this. Games are always the same. It doesn't matter if it's a card game from 50 years ago, or a board game, or a sports game, ancient Roman games. Games are always about the ex uh, experiences. And the technology enables you to give people different experiences, but at the core, games are about experiences. Uh, and the experience of a game is typically a fun problem-solving activity. That's the experience. There's many interpretations of that, but when you, when you get down to it, what makes all these games the same, whether it's a sports game or a VR game or, or a mobile game, it's a fun activity and it's your, your problem solving. In football, you're trying to solve the problem of how do we get this ball to the other side and defeat this team. And in video games, it, it can be, uh, again, what's the problem, how am I gonna solve it? So VR is just uh, the latest technology. Um, and I don't know where it's gonna go exactly, but I see it as a positive thing because I think the game industry is one of those industries that's going to just keep growing and growing because newer and newer technology to give you newer and newer experiences is just inevitable with this. So I think VR is probably just the tip of the iceberg for what's going to be coming and whatever that evolves into, I think it's just going to keep growing. Do you have any plans to release your game on Nintendo Switch? It seems to be what everyone wants to do nowadays. Nintendo, can you hear me? I would love to. <laughs> um, no plans right now. That, that would be great. Um, either my game or doing something with Nintendo would be amazing. Um, but yeah, no plans right now. I just know I have a Switch. I got all the games on it so far. I think they're coming out with Smash Brothers soon, so yeah, I gotta get that. Over, the over 500 games at the store in like the last month or something ridiculous. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Are, but they're probably a lot of indie games, right? Yeah, not the official Nintendo. Not first party. Yeah. Um, I'll have to double check again because I just downloaded a bunch. I think I got Super <laughs> Meat Boy uh, a couple weeks ago. I'd never played it before. It's pretty fun. So you're re-releasing your game. What's next uh, with new modes? But what's next for your company after that? Well, I look at it like this: we have a brand that is recognized worldwide. I've traveled 17 countries, and I will oftentimes wear my shirt and meet people who play the game who are excited about the game, and it never fails in how many people I'm able to meet. So. What it's told me is, well, we have this brand, it's recognized everywhere, so we are planning mainly on expanding that brand. We have a bunch of, uh, we have a couple years worth of updates already planned out for the main Color Switch game, but we're also going to be doing uh, standalone titles, all using the brand, and these are all different types of um, popular gameplay types that you would find on the App Store, but we'll be using the Color Switch brand for those, and we'll be expanding the brand into other areas like merchandise and um, we have a couple plans to work with some other companies with their characters and do kind of a mashup. And um, this time around for the launch, uh, we have all this kind of, you know, we, the last couple of years we have the proof that this um, brand is uh, popular with people and has a lot of staying power and retention for, you know, gameplay and whatnot. So this time around we have a lot of partners who are come, uh, coming into this with us. And so we have a lot of plans basically based around the game. Not worried about other IPs or creating other IPs right now because it just makes sense as a business. We have a product that people like, let's expand upon that. 
you could give one piece of advice to every fu to future game designers and game developers out there on mobile, VR, Switch, console, whatever, what would it be? Well, there's a few things I learned along the way. Uh, all, the, the last 10 plus years that I've been kind of trying, trying this, trying that. Um, and the, the three things I've learned, I hope I remember all three right now. One is you have to go outside your comfort zone in a big way. For me, it was, in, it was the military. I w was a medic in the Army years ago, went to Iraq and did a, my job as a medic. And then when I got out of that, every time a challenge would present itself to me, I could always go back to those experiences and think, well, no one's shooting at me, so this can't be that challenging. I, can't, I can think I can handle this. And so I always have that perspective. And if you really want to find out what you're capable of, you have to go outside your comfort zone in a big way because every challenge that comes to you after that, which isn't as challenging as that, is going to be doable. It's going to seem doable, even though you probably will fail a bunch still as you meet that challenge. But in your mind, you know that you can do it. Number two is you have to be willing to fail as many times as it takes. Now, there's nothing wrong with trying something, trying this job, trying that job. And if you don't like it, then stopping that and finding something else. But once you kind of lock into something you feel like you're, you know, that you're passionate about, you have to be willing to fail as many times as it takes. And I failed for two years, making 40 games, plus many more projects that never left my computer. And then um, it was a year between my last game and Color Switch. So within that year, I could totally quit. I could have totally quit and never would have known that that next game would have been the one that would have given me the breakthrough I was looking for. So you have to be willing to fail as many times as it takes. And within that process of failing, you have to learn from your failure and then apply that new understanding to uh, the next thing you try. And then you might fail again, but you have to go in that cycle but always putting new information in your mind so that you have new actions and you have new results based off of putting new information there. And that could be books, talking to people, going on a trip. Um, and the last thing I would say is, see, I, I knew I was gonna have trouble remembering all of them, but, oh, it's always improving how you think. And a great book that will, two books, my whole game design college is The Art of Game Design by Jesse Schell and the book Thinker Toys. Thinker Toys is a book filled with creative thinking techniques and if you apply these every day, your thinking will gradually get better and better and more creative and you'll think differently um, over time. And again, if you think differently, then you have different results until you have your breakthrough. So those are the three things I would recommend that people do in anything. It doesn't have to be games, it could be anything.